joined by Frontier CEO Barry Biffle. Barry, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me on, Kyle. How do you convince people that it's safe to fly again? You know, we've, we've been asking that question for, for, for several weeks now. And, you know, over a month ago, we started a new fogging procedure uh, to, to clean the aircraft. Uh, we were one of the first airlines to, to require customers to, to do a health certification before they come on board. We started requiring masks a few weeks ago of our employees. And now we're requiring it of all of our customers. And we think that that is what is necessary in order to keep people safe. And uh, sales are responding as a result. Uh, people recognize that if I wear a mask and you wear a mask, the odds of us giving each other coronavirus is very low. I've had friends who fly a lot more than I do say that there's the opportunity for this situation to really scramble up the way people fly and their loyalty to a certain airline, that this could kind of reset the entire field. Do you guys see that happening? I don't know. It's probably too early to see that just yet. But I do know that people are going to be looking in everything they do when they leave their home. Uh, how are they safe? And they're going to question you know, is an airline or is a hotel or whoever that they're going to do business with, are they doing everything they can to, to keep them safe? And in our, in our case, we, we challenge ourselves to make sure you're as safe on Frontier as you are sheltering in place at home. How far out do we have to look in the distance before you see a return to leisure travel? So we're, we're starting to see leisure travel come back. Uh, you know, we're seeing visiting friends and relatives as well as some you know, limited amount of leisure starting to form up uh, this spring and into this summer. Um, but it's nowhere near the levels it was. But uh, it, it is starting to come back now. And, and again, I think it's back to this, you know, they have researched and they feel confident to fly on Frontier. So Frontier's model, the, the low-cost model, is the a la carte model where people pay for various perks and this and that. And you're allowing people to pay to have an empty seat next to them. Are you asking people to pay for safety? No. So, so we actually believe, as I said a moment ago, that uh, you're safe on Frontier. Uh, as long as you're wearing a mask and everyone else is, plus all the cleaning procedures and everything else we've done. But we do recognize that we've had a lot of people ask us to guarantee if we could uh, have a seat open next to them. And even prior to this, we were looking at adding this option just for people who wanted more space. So, no, you're not paying for safety. We believe you're safe on Frontier. But if you'd like a little bit more peace of mind and a little more space, uh, we're going to offer that option. When you guys are flying planes that are often uh, partially empty anyway, is this not something that your crews are already doing, moving people about to get them more space? We are, and, and a lot of airlines are doing that. But what they're not doing is guaranteeing it. And last week, there was a, a very famous incident on another airline where a woman was very upset uh, who had to sit in the middle seat and she was crunched in between two people she didn't know. And so we, we've gotten a lot of feedback that people want the guarantee. And so uh, that's what we're providing. The bulk of the federal bailout dollars for airlines are going to some of the largest carriers. And the last I saw, uh, Frontier and some other smaller carriers were kind of splitting up the very end of that pot. Have you guys found out how much you're getting from the federal government and how much you'll need to repay taxpayers? Yes. So, so the grant, there's two parts. There's the grant program as well as the loan program. And the grant program was designed around uh, payroll protections, uh, like many of the small business programs, very similar. And so that piece is $200 million, of which we have to pay back uh, $30 million. Um, and the other portion covers roughly half of our payroll uh, during that six-month period. And then the loan portion would be uh, roughly $500 million, and that is all paid back as well. So in total, we would end up owing uh, the federal government about $530 million, plus uh, obviously there would be some stock warrants uh, and the interest on that. Um, but if you look at what the government gets back for that, it would have cost the government more uh, in, in unemployment and everything else. Where do you guys stand right now in terms of furloughs and layoffs, and where do you see it going in the next few months? So we have not furloughed or laid off any employees. And um, at this point, uh, we're, we're very, uh, very confident that if things continue to improve, uh, that we won't have any furloughs. Obviously, I'll never say never. Um, but it'll be one of the last things that we do would be to furlough employees. So my understanding is that in return for at least some of the federal dollars, that airlines are being required to maintain service unless they're able to get waivers. And that this is, uh, it's, it's a burden that can be borne by the largest carriers a lot easier than it can uh, by an airline like Frontier. Do you feel comfortable with the way the current setup is working or do you need additional allowances in order to stay afloat? 
Listen, we're, we're, we're very grateful that the government stepped in at a time when, when there's really no financing out there for, for a lot of businesses. And so, yes, there are some restrictions and it's re making us uh, uh, fly a little more than we in intended. Um, but but we're really happy to do our part of, of keeping America moving. So, so at this at this point, you're comfortable with the amount of waivers that you guys have received to cut back flights or, or you think you need a lot more? Um, well, look, I mean, it, it really depends, Kyle, on how many people get back in, in the air and, and start traveling again. And um, what we're seeing right now is, is the burden is obviously gets smaller every day when more bookings appear. I'm, I'm sure that you've seen the uh, the pretty widely shared comments on CNBC recently by the venture capitalist, uh, Chamath Palahaptari, uh, and saying that, you know, it, listen, if, if an airline goes under, an airline goes under, and it's going to hurt investors and those folks, employees will be protected in the end. Not a big deal. Your thoughts? I, I, I saw that. And um, I think that uh, the truth is there's a lot of businesses that this was not their fault. And, and uh, you know, we're protecting a lot of businesses in this economy. And I would think that uh, the average person doesn't understand what would happen if you actually had that many airlines bankrupt all at once. Um, we're not, we haven't ruled out bankruptcies, right? There, there may be, I'm not saying Frontier, but there may be some other airlines that file bankruptcy at some point, but it needs to be done over an orderly process. So, so I, I don't think this is some permanent you know, fix that will necessitate uh, no bankruptcies, but there could be at some point, and it needs to be orderly if that were to happen. And I think this gives some of those airlines time. Last question for you, sir. 9-11 um, and the response to that forever changed the way that Americans viewed flying. Do you think that this will have a similar long-term, perhaps permanent impact on the way we fly? So I don't know about permanent. I do believe that uh, long haul international um, and probably some business business travel is probably going to be some of the last things that, that come back. Um, but I believe it will come back eventually. And, and if you're not allowed to go to see your cousins in Australia or whatever for some period of time, there's going to be pent up demand uh, when you can. Um, but I think in the near term, people are going to be cautious. And that's why it's, it's imperative for carriers like Frontier and, and everyone in the value chain for travel to do their part to keep everyone safe. And that's the, that's the fastest way we'll get people back in the, in the air. All right, Barry Biffle, I appreciate your time. All the best to you and to your employees and to your passengers. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle.